Okay. So nothing more exciting than pricing and licensing at this point in the day. Mm -hmm. So um, quick introduction, my name is Jeremy Allen, I'm a director of pricing and licensing here at Commvault. Um, I'm going to start this off with a little bit of a story. Um, this week marks my eighth anniversary with Commvault. And going back to when I first started here, before I came here, I worked for a partner uh, here in the US, very large one, and uh, doing a lot of software licensing. And as I'm announcing that I'm leaving, I'm telling everyone I'm going to Commvault, I'm very excited. The feedback I'm getting is who? What? Commvault? And I'm going through this and I'm starting to feel a little frustrated because I'm like, I, it, it's an exciting opportunity. Finally, I get a sales rep and I say Commvault and his eyes light up. And I'm like, I got him, I got it. And he looks at it and goes, I have a customer that uses Commvault. It's the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, great, this is fantastic. And he goes, I have no idea how any of it works. And I have no idea what I'm quoting. All I know is I get this uh, bunch of part numbers and I put it in front of the customer and they buy it. And I said, gee, wow. as a licensing specialist, that's gonna be challenging. But um, I object to the whole concept of licensing specialist. <laughs> the, the fact we need licensing specialists means licensing is broken. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, both. Both, why not? <laughs> Right, and my background prior to coming here was mostly around Microsoft, which is a whole different... Which is also broken. Yeah, which is a whole different, which is a whole different cup of tea. But there was my frame of reference. Same. So I knew coming in that I was in for a treat. <laughs> and a as I got into it, um, you know, we, certainly, we certainly looked around and said, there's a lot going on. Now, I first came in as an engineer. And as a, as a technical engineer, you know, understanding the licensing was an important thing. And for a long time, the, the licensing rules and the licensing concepts were the domain of the engineers. Sales reps, partners had no idea. They need somebody very technical to answer licensing questions. So about a year ago, we started on a journey with licensing to say, you know, how do we make this better? And Bob and Al came to us and said, guys, you know, we hear all the time Commvault is great, but. Commvault is great, but it's expensive. Or Commvault is great, but it's complicated. Um, get yourselves on the other side of that but. Don't be a reason why not Commvault. Um, so we started to undertake a process here, uh, and it was, a, it was a long time coming, and it was a long process as we reached out to a lot of folks, partners, customers, our internal field sales reps, um, folks like that to understand what can we do, what works, what doesn't work, how do we make it better. And so uh, as Don mentioned before, and you'll see some of these slides are very similar to what Don said, um, we set out to make this easy or as easy as one can make it. And um, you know, this is what we came up with, with Commvault Complete. So the idea uh, really was to simplify everything from you know, the, what you need to what we quote and price to what you actually get as a product um, and how we work with our partner community. As I mentioned before, coming from a partner, it was vitally important as we expand our reach and have more folks uh, selling for us and positioning for us, uh, it was vitally important that we made the packaging simple enough that anyone who is an expert in Commvault and who's not an expert in Commvault, we need them both to be able to tell the story and understand the message. So that's really what we were working for to get to that scale. So what is complete? And Don mentioned it before, uh, to be sure. Uh, it is about minimizing disruption and that means you know, if you're having a conversation with a prospect or a customer about the wonders of Commvault, licensing and pricing should not be a hindrance to that conversation. It should augment it. It should echo the conversation. And as we look to simplify a lot of our, our products, and you know, you've seen some of the automation and some of those great things that, uh, that Don put up before, we want the pricing and licensing to go along with that so that a customer is maximizing their investment. What we saw a lot of times over the years was folks would make an investment in one title and shift how they use the software and now had to make it an equally large investment in another title and there were silos of, of investment. So we wanted to make sure that we maximized what, what the customer had spent with us and also uh, make it easier to understand and consume. And obviously lining up to how customers want to purchase. Uh, we see very two, two very distinct camps. We see folks that generally will bill back to their end uh, constituents, departments, you know, they will, they will basically say, we're providing a service to you and we're going to basically charge that, that business by the amount of data they have. So capacity licensing is one way to go. Uh, other folks say, I don't do that. I buy infrastructure. I buy VMware. I buy Microsoft Hyper-V. I buy these things and I, and I have a specific way of doing that. I want to align the backups with that procurement model as much as I can. 
So those are the two main things, but obviously remaining agile. You know, folks who, you know, we know that the, the environments change, needs change, uh, and giving folks uh, an option that's flexible to do very different, taking very different approaches to how you protect your data. Uh, we want to be able to allow that and not have these caveats or strings around it to say, well, you bought this, but you really don't get the rights to use this other thing. And if you want that, you've got to buy something else. We want to make it complete. And that's really what it's all about, making it easy to consume and understand. So where are we with Commvault Complete? Backup and recovery. Basically, everything we do from a backup and recovery uh, standpoint falls into this title. Uh, and there are a couple different ways to license it based on those needs I mentioned before. But it really comes down to that as a, as a backup and recovery product. And then the other three uh, offerings, Orchestrate, Activate, and of course Hyperscale, uh, which do very different things related to but not necessarily backup in and of itself. So um, these different things can be tacked on, added on. In the case of Activate, it can be done standalone if you want to know your data better. So these things all really start to focus in on what we do. Uh, in the past, and I'll go through it on a slide here in a minute, there was a lot more to it. And uh, you know, trying to distill it down into these, into these offerings is a big deal. So again, everything back in recovery, uh, licensed by front end terabytes, uh, or you can do VMs or sockets, whichever you prefer. You know, we see a lot of folks today, as they start to move into the cloud, you don't know what a socket is in the cloud. And that certainly doesn't transport there well, but VM, certainly does. Uh, physical servers instances uh, as, as another option there too for the non-virtualized workloads. Uh, and then finally the two main workloads where end users typically directly interact with the software um, in one form or another, through, be it through uh, the endpoint um, self-service console, uh, mailboxes uh, through our content store integration. Uh, those sorts of things are more of a user-centric workload and are licensed as such. Um, so those are the, the license options under that title of backup and recovery. And then the other three, uh, and Don alluded to it, the hyperscale is really about all that infrastructure. We offer as, a, as an appliance, uh, and an existing customer can buy an existing customer appliance. Certainly we have a bundle where if a customer says, I want the entire thing under one licensing and packaging construct, for new customers we have a hyperscale fully baked appliance that basically is a turnkey solution. Turn it on and start backing things up. But we have the two options, and then of course our reference architecture programs with HPE, Cisco, uh, you know, and you name it, the, the other ones out there. Um, so that's hyperscale. Now Orchestrate is all about automation. It's all about um, taking an application and not really treating it as 10 different systems, but as one cohesive application, automating it, make sure the database, the fundamental database in that application is protected in the right way, replicated to the right place. Uh, and if you want to do things like dev test ops, on that application, being able to push a button and drop that environment into a cloud um, and, and have your developers work on that. Taking it even a step further to say, I only want that out there for, for five days before I bring it back down because somebody's gonna leave that on in the cloud and consume resources, right? So all of these different things uh, around Orchestrator are a big deal for, from a cost savings perspective. And one thing we saw from a pricing perspective as we talked to customers and, and partners, folks will pay for this you know, to an extent. Um, what they don't do is there comes a point in time where it becomes so expensive that they just code something themselves. They just script something and do it themselves. So we want to be very mindful to not have that price scale too far, um, you know, to be uh, you know, unaccessible. And I'll talk about some of our competitors in that space uh, in just a minute. Okay, one question. Yeah. So if I do capacity licensing, that includes mailboxes and endpoints? No. Mailboxes and end users okay. are always a separate entity. So the last one is the data governance, and uh, Don mentioned that we have uh, the user-based licensing, and that's really a site-wide approach to say um, you can do as much of this, anal of this analytic work, governance work, um, you know, ad adhere to GDPR compliance, uh, just tell us how many employees you, you have, uh, data owners, uh, people who have created data, and that's the license metric for that, to get to more of a site license approach. Uh, yeah, I got a problem with that model, okay, because mm -hmm. you're not really taught. You're, if I have ten thousand users mm -hmm. and thirty percent overhead, excuse me, thirty percent turnover, mm -hmm. then next is that thirteen thousand users no. next year? No. The active employee count, always the active employee count. <laughs> so, and we do have, and Don mentioned too, we have another option too. If you'd rather go to a more ut utilitarian approach to say, okay, what kind of infrastructure do you want to have here? Do you, how many search servers? 
index servers do you need to have? We have another way to do it. Okay, so I can, become, I can be complex if I want to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I meant it. You can be special. Howard's already. <laughs> well, I, I, I am special, and I ride the short bus. But, but we've, and, and to uh, that point, I mean, we've seen, we've seen use cases where you know, um, we've had customers that want to do very specific things with, with, with Activate. They're not looking for a site-wide governance play or site-wide analytics play. You know, we had one customer with 10 petabytes of data sitting on a NAS, on a, in a NAS environment, and they just wanted to know about that. It wasn't related to their 80,000 users they had. It was related to these 10 you know petabytes of NAS data. Set up a few servers, you know, and, and focus on that, and it's it's a different use case. Right. It certainly, the, is the, this lawsuit only applies to procurement. I only need that for the procurement people. Absolutely. So um, again, and, and I can license activate post facto, right? What do you mean post facto? Um, I have backed up all of this data, and I need to do keyword searches. For Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. This works with live crawl, you know, you can crawl data live if you want to, or it certainly will integrate with our backup data. And that's the sweet spot, of course. You know, if we oh, have and that data. subpoena comes, it's always backup data. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> because if you're just crawling live data, you can't then take the step to hold it, legal hold it, you know, put it into review sets and things like that. So yeah, these two can work independently, but they work better together. Right, mm -hmm. and, and you're in, a, in an interest, as opposed to the rest of the industry, which requires another scan of the active data and another repository for archive. Yep. Being able to go, I'll choose Commvault so that if a subpoena comes, I can pay you for the legal hold part mm -hmm. is an interesting play. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Hey, Jeremy, is file sharing under backup, complete backup and recovery, what, what does that mean to you? Great question. Huh. So um, file sharing is a feature, um, and it's actually part of the endpoint solution, um, where you can take the, you know, the, the, the contents of your laptop. Like I can go on my phone, for example, and access data from my laptop. I can, from here, share it with others. Um, you know, basically use the content store. It's pretty cool. To act as a like repository Dropbox. for data, like um, you know, for that sort of file sharing. Does that make sense? You can share like. Sync and share, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Not and new. what we find, that's a great, and that's a great you know, point. Um, what we find a lot of times is folks are using commercial products for that. You know, end users tend to use, you know, you name it, there's about 15 different you know, cloud drives uh, available. Um, what you lose with that is corporate control. You don't have any insight into that data anymore. You know, heaven forbid they're putting corporate secrets <laughs> in, a, in a cloud account that you have no visibility to. Um, with this, you can give those users that sort of functionality and yet maintain control over it, be able to go and index it, find it, you know, and uh, you know, hold it if you need to. For to, to be clear, the stuff you're sharing is the stuff out of the content store, which is backed up data, not off the live systems. That's right. Right. So you can, yeah. It's, it's share, but not sync. It's not, well, it's not oh, it off the live yeah. data, right? No, it's not. I would defer to some yes. of the, uh, the other tech, more technical folks than me to, to go through that, but it can be sync. But do, do you mean that you need two licenses? two endpoint licenses, one for laptop and one for the mobile device? One for the, uh, one for the endpoint and one for the what? Laptop and mobile device. No, no. This is all done per user. So if I have a laptop, a desktop, um, a mobile device, it's just one user. Oh, we we cool. do it all by the access, by the that's user access. Interesting. Okay. Because they, you can't and, and, really and, uh, but they thought about the user, sharing, I like it. Is that part of this virtual DR in the cloud? Is that uh, certainly, any of these products, any this complete product, uh, will allow you to take a local backup copy if you want, make a secondary copy to the cloud, and set re retention policies mm -hmm. to hold it as long as you'd like. There's no extra, there's no extra cost for that. Different it's all based policies on the, the core package. Too. Data migration and that sort of stuff. That's in the orchestrate product. Uh, and John, and Don was mm -hmm. talking about you know being able to go from mm -hmm. Azure to AWS like or recovery. Yeah. So going from Azure to AWS, any kind of VM to VM basic transformations, that's all here. What you get in orchestration oh, really? is the multi-server coordination, where it's not just a server, it's an application, and you get some <laughs> broader application integration with that and synchronization. Oh. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with you know, when you're dealing with entities that are more than one server, it's not just you know point to point. So I could move from VMware to AWS to mm -hmm. Azure all within complete backup and recovery. Absolutely. It's really, from when it comes down to it, it's an out of place recovery, what is what it comes down to. So yeah, we can absolutely go from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Was IBM public cloud in there too? Not. Uh, from a conversion standpoint, yes it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I see Matt shaking his head over there. 
Yes. Oh, Deepak's over here. Okay. <laughs> like, boom. That was like a redirect. Boom. So, okay. Um, so for anybody who's, who's followed us uh, for a long time, um, this is a little bit of a departure for us. I'm going to show us show where we were <clears throat> even a year ago. And um, we're going to do this from memory. We had, over, you know, over the last eight years since I've been here, we've had DPE, DPA, DPC, FAE, FAC, DP, DAE, DAC, <laughs> uh, DPSR, DPF, DPS, ISIM, ESIM, MSIM, CSIM, um, FBR, NBR, ABR, WTH. Um, a lot of WTF. WTF. <laughs> and, a, and a lot of WTF. Yeah. That too. Um, but uh, certainly there was a lot going on. And as I mentioned before, from a partner perspective, my gosh, I, it, you know, for a company that does what we do, there's a lot of acronyms. Uh, and a lot and of what. For a while there, there was capacity based licensing too, right? For a while there, there was capacity based licensing too. Absolutely. That's where all the stuff you see up at the top, the, all those things. So it was, and it was when do you use capacity versus VM licensing versus this versus that. And when you do all these different add-ons, which I didn't even add into the acronym list, but there were a bunch of those as well. And the noise just kept, you know, it was just, guys, relax. <laughs> let's, let's focus in on what you guys do well, which is obviously backup and recovery. And that's what we've done. So we've taken all those different pieces and we've distilled it down into one cohesive backup product and then the three logical uh, add-ons. And, you know, from a uh, ease of doing business perspective, uh, this leads into how we quote and how we position to customers. So we've done a lot of work internally uh, around being able to get a quote to a customer and working with our partners to do that. Uh, one of the big pieces of feedback that we always got from partners was, it takes you a week or two to give me what I need to quote. You know, going back to my friend uh, you know, at my old company, he just would get some, handed something from Convo and say, here, put a, put, put a price on this and, and off you go. Um, being able to have our partners do this on their own is such a critical thing. So the questions really about how you want to consume your licensing are, do you like to count capacity, which gives you a broad um, set of flexibilities? Or do you want to count your infrastructure, which is really what it comes down to? I want to count my sockets, or I want to count how many VMs I have, or I want to count how many servers I have, all of those different things. Um, I always say, do you want to count terabytes or do you want to count stuff, is what it comes down to. Um, but once you get those questions out of the way, um, it's, it's about the other things. Do you want, are you interested in scale-out storage architecture? Are you interested in uh, knowing more about your data, about automating you know, copy management and, and um, service delivery? You know, those sorts of things you know, are now a broader conversation, a more detailed conversation, because you're not spending the first three, three days trying to figure out how to license the backup uh, environment. And so all of this leads into a quote. And I won't do it here, because <laughs> rule number one, I used to be an engineer, never do a live demo when you haven't tested it. But we have the ability, you know, basically if I was in front of a customer right now, I could ask those questions and get to a list price right off my phone. So it, you know, as a partner, that's a huge thing. Uh, as, a, as a Commvault sales rep, it's a huge thing. Um, being able to you know, take a lot of the nuance out of it. Because it used to be a secret decoder ring. You know, yes, it was a VM, but you couldn't, you couldn't license it by VM because you're going to do a different approach to it and things like that. So all of this really gets, um, gets slimmed down. I had a question. Is, yeah. is this tied to a certain version of the product? Um, it is, hmm. from, a, from a licensing perspective, no. Um, you know, most, it, all the metering and the measurements that, that tie into this are very focused on version 11. Um, but certainly we can license it in any, in any way. It just changes how we meter things. Hey, Jeremy, yeah. uh, the complete backup and recovery has these various versions of uh, pricing, FAT, virtual, mm -hmm. physical, mailbox endpoint. Yep. Hyperscaler does not? You're not selling hyperscaler on a VM basis or a capacity basis? Hyperscale is solely about the storage it's managing. Um, it's, so when you are an existing, so when, if you're an existing customer who has capacity licensed or VMs or you know, those sorts of things like so You already have to have complete backup and recovery in order to, to take advantage of hyperscaler. If you, well, no, if you, if you have you don't an have existing have customer, you can add hyperscale. recovery to take advantage of hyperscaler. Right, but however, if you just want to sell a hyperscale appliance to a new customer who has none of that backup, it is entirely self-contained to the appliance. So if you buy a 120 terabyte raw appliance, um, that package for a new customer, not the, ex we have an E model, which is for existing, 
and we have a, a full model that's for a new customer. That package comes with everything you need to store data on that appliance, agents, um, all, the different, all the different rights to everything from a backup perspective. You can sell that to a customer and we don't care what it is, it's, it, you know, fill the appliance is basically what it comes down to. Does that answer it or, or no? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, if I buy or purchase the hyperscaler appliance, mm -hmm. do I get a license for, let's say, 20 terabytes of complete backup and recovery mm -hmm. in addition to that? Is that yeah. how it works? The, the bundle, um, the, the licensing is a, little, is a little different because it's tied to the usable storage of the array. It's tied to the hyperscaler storage? Yeah, the hyperscale storage. So if you buy a 120 terabyte um, appliance, it has, and I, again, doing the, the base two calculations and the, and the you know, the, um, <coughs> the erasure code, you know, reductions and things like that. There's a number um, that we license to. Um, it's, I, I want to say it's 72 terabytes um, that's usable there. Uh, you can store up to 72 terabytes of data there. We don't, we don't worry about, you know, how many agents you use. You know, you just get to store 72 terabytes of stuff on that, on that uh, appliance. And then we give you a mirror. So if you want to take 72 terabytes to the cloud, you can do that as well. Okay, thanks. Okay. But if I want to spool off to the cloud and have longer retention and therefore have 400 terabytes in the cloud and 72 terabytes on premises, then we have to talk about additional capacity licensing. Yes, yeah. in the appliance model, yes. But in, but in um, the general you know, non-appliance mo mode, no. I'm sorry, go over that again slowly. <laughs> the so the appliance comes... My appliance and I want to use cloud tiering for 400 terabytes on top of that. I have to purchase additional licensing for the hyperscaler appliance to cover that cloud tier. If you're going to keep long-term retention there on the appliance program, there is a there is an extra license cost over time. Yeah, beyond the hyperscaler. Mm -hmm. But with the with the general Commvault licensing, there is no back end. Okay, it's a lot. Gotcha. It's a lot simpler. It's free. But like everything else, once you start pulling on the strings, it's not actually simple. <laughs> We're taking, you know, we, we keep making steps. baby steps. Yeah, <laughs> a heck of a lot better than it was. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. A a big improvement, just. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> want the traditional media agent type of deployment uh, with your own backend storage and you tear out the cloud, I'd say you still just need to complete. There's nothing else yep. you need to buy. Yeah. So, you know, when you architect it, just consider that. Yes. No loss as you got to go hyperscale. <laughs> and a lot of it yeah, but I don't want to install Gluster and myself. And that's where you know, designing the right solution is important. Um, real quick, I won't read through it. Partner feedback on it has been very good uh, so far, um, and there and we're seeing a lot of activity around them being able to do their own thing. Yeah. Um, you know, coming from a partner, I never wanted to call a vendor until I got stuck, until I needed something from them. So this is a it's a, it's a very positive uh, set of feedback we're seeing here. Uh, competitive, real quick, because I, I know we're almost out of time. Um, we've sort of rotated in one direction as some of these folks out there that have always claimed to be simple start to rotate into more complexity. So we're kind of crossing a little bit here. Um, you know, we see where some of the, uh, the smaller guys um, tend to either have a shortcoming from a product perspective or they just charge for add-ons for various things, cloud storage for one thing, um, or tape integration, some of the more obvious stuff um, where the costs aren't always uh, equivalent. We're putting all these things that you see here into the complete backup and recovery product. And when you're looking at some of the competitors, they're not. And so that's a big thing. Um, blowing through this a little bit here, uh, we have made sure from a pricing perspective that we are in line with our primary competitors out there in the space. And I don't have names because that's not what I'm doing here. But in most cases, <laughs> nice in most cases, we're coming in at or just below <laughs> list prices for other competitors out there. So uh, we feel we're very strong that we're competitive in the marketplace from a pricing perspective. Uh, a year ago, we might have been higher to you know a little bit more challenging there. Uh, but we've made some adjustments, especially in the, in the July timeframe, uh, that have really changed the game a little bit. So. Um, you know, certainly not a whole lot of detail here, but it's important to note. Um, when we're talking about hybrid infrastructure, you know, when we start looking at some of these competitors out there, uh, when you talk about complete, um, you know, as noted, we aren't really charging for you know extra cloud um, consumption when you do the complete when you do the complete license model. Um, other people are. You know, they have a, they have a virtual appliance they may put in the cloud, or they may have an archive tier that they license for. We're not doing that. You know, we are basically um, standing on our laurels. Um, you know, going with the idea of um, you know do what you want with the data. You know, we're not going to charge you based on your retention policies. So that's a big thing. 
Uh, when you go up in the enterprise space, uh, we start to see a little bit of a different dynamic. Um, folks have more, have more interest in premium reporting uh, and a lot of the orchestration. Uh, we do have the fee for orchestration, um, but a lot of folks will charge uh, for advanced reporting. Some will do for a cloud. And what we'll see is some people will charge based on how much data you have. When you talk about something like orchestration, are you really going to orchestrate all the data? No, you're going to orchestrate a very small set in a lot of cases. Why pay, you know, pay a higher terabyte price across the board if you're only going to do a part of the environment? Actually, I do have an issue with what you just said in the, pri in the previous mm -hmm. comment. When you said, we're only going to charge, we're not going to charge you based on your retention policies, but with hyperscale, it's exactly what you're doing. Well, the appliances, yes. yes right. Like so if you're doing a little bit of both, right, you're doing a front end, you're, doing, you're buying your front end licensed VMs or a front end, that's all great. You can do whatever you want in the back end. Yep. But hyperscale, then you also have a back end, and your, if your retention policies are long, that could really add to your cost. If you're going outside the scope of the appliance. But I guess if you didn't do that, you'd be paying it for storage somewhere else anyway, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could always buy more appliances if you wanted to do it on-prem and have a longer-term retention. You know, it's, it's a very yeah. similar thing. <laughs> all right. I guess you're paying for it one way or the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the big things, and... and sure. um, Don hit Jeremy, it, I'm going to wrap up, Jeremy, just, just finishing up. Uh, the alliances, the HPEs, the Cisco's, the NetApps of the world, one of our big things was don't create confusion by different partnerships. And make sure that you know, whatever partnership we go through, the street price of the customer is generally the same. One of the big pieces of feedback we got was when you go through a different partner or a different program, it's fundamentally different from a, uh, from a pricing perspective. Why is that? That's confusing. We're trying to make sure that everything is rationalized in the same way and so the customer can have the same experience across the different areas. Um, feedback from the alliance has been pretty good uh, so far, and you'll hear more about that in the next coming in the coming days. And uh, as a service, um, you know, David was here before. Uh, we are bringing as a service to market, making sure that the prices align. Uh, obviously, if you're doing a service, there's a premium to that, but there's also a lot of savings you can get from infrastructure costs and, and such.